Hello, this is Jake, and today I have another Halo type video sort of thing. Uh, this is scripting. So um, today, the, what's it called? The other day we had a custom pickups. I'm going to show you what we at least did, where we picked up objects uh, such as this speed boots power up, got speed boots stuff like that, and then well from there we taught you how to pick up an object and place it somewhere else in a specific location where you were able to oh it's because I was yeah by the way they don't spawn in unless you're out of the way that's one thing so that's what I showed you the other day I'll leave a link in the, for a download in the description of this map and the link for the video of how to do this stuff uh, at least these stuff from the previous video down in the description all right, so today uh, what I have is the, the um, choice, I guess, of where you want to put your object. This is a concept I did while I was working on a zombie map, which is still not done, where basically you're going to be able to choose where you defend, how you defend the, the bunker in this case. by uh, get, You're given a few objects, and you get to place them in the doorways and windows and so forth so that the zombies can't get in those certain areas. So here we go. Well, I'm going to show you each of that. Oh, each of these choices works. So let's pick up the object and let's go with. All right, this one over here. You can pick up. You place down the object here. Back up and boom, it's here. And now I can't place it in the other areas at all. There's no markers. So the idea is that basically placing this down makes it so you can't place it in the other spots. So I'm going to I'm going to show you the other choices just to show you that it works. All right, so we're back here for um showing off option 2, so I'm just going to pick it up again. And let's go over. Boom, place it there. Now I can't place it in the other spots. All right, now I'm going to go and show you option 3. So here we are. Let's do the last option. And boom, here we go. Back up, boom, box is there, can't place in the other spots. All right, so now that I've shown you that this works, first of all, I'll show you how it works in Forge. All right, so we're here in Forge, and let's show you how to make it. First thing you do to do, I need to check which. Our spawn channel is 10, all right, so. Over at your spawn, you need to have a on enter on that is on broadcast channel 10. This will allow you to spawn in the object you're making. So that will be, in this case, this object here. Make sure your object is the same channel as your broadcast channel uh, for the on enter on. And that will allow you to, what's called, spawn it in right at the start so you can pick it. Then you need a switch on, which is on broadcast channel 11. And you need a timer off, which will pick up the object. And from here, we'll start over with the left, like choice one. You need to have a power channel of 11 and a broadcast channel of 12 for this one. Then for the switch on here, oh, by the way, this is a timer on. So now for the switch on, you need to have power channel 12 and broadcast channel 13. Your box needs to be spawn channel 13. Also, it needs to be candy spawn true and place it start false. Now, on top, what's well, it doesn't matter where these are, but you need to have two timer offs if you're going to have three choices. You could have as many choices as you want, but that will increase the amount of the things you have here. So here, what you need is a a broad power channel 13, which is it's called what corresponds to this switch, and it needs to broadcast 14. The second one here needs to be power channel 13 and broadcast to 16. These basically these here will broadcast to these switches, making them inoperable. So that won't make it so you can't pick them up or anything. Then for this one, you need to have a power channel of 11, broadcast channel 14, switch on, the switch on needs to be power channel 14, broadcast channel 15. 
Yeah, by the way, timer ons all the way across. All right, so now for your switch on, power channel 14, broadcast channel 15, box, same as the other box, advanced, place to start false, candy spawn true, and then spawn channel 15. Oh, up here, you make it the same. The timer offs correspond to your switch ons for the other two choices. So timer off, power channel 15, broadcast channel 12. So that's for that switch there. Then power channel 15, broadcast channel 16, broadcast to that switch. Now for the last one here, you, can, you have your timer on, power channel 11, broadcast channel 16. Then you, after your timer on, you need a switch on, which will be... Power channel 16, broadcast channel 17. Then this will be spawn channel 17. Then these will have the power channels of 17 and the broadcast channels of your switches. 14 on this one and 12 on the other. Yep. So the idea is what's happening here. This, this right here is all it takes to these two and that despawn your object when you pick it up. Then these convert the signal so you can choose each choice individually. And then those will activate their individual switches. But as soon as you choose one switch, it these two deactivate the others. That's the idea. So what you could do here is you could have infinite amount of things as long as you have uh, enough objects, obviously. So I could have eight boxes. I could have ten like choices of where it has to be but then you'd have to have nine of those ten of these and ten of these i wouldn't recommend too many choices for one object maybe like two to three spots where you could put it like that's kind of how i would recommend doing it but yeah this is a very powerful uh, and that's sure i'm hoping for whatever maps they're making puzzle maps zombie maps really anything gonna be awesome well thank you for watching please like and subscribe and i will see you next time